everyone, I'm Eric. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And uh, we've got another five inch gauge video for you today. No surprise really, seeing as it is summer, we're making the most of the good weather and enjoying time with my friends. Hence the double O gauges took a bit of a back step lately. Well, for quite a few months actually. But rest assured, there has been a lot of progress on both sides. And there will be a full update video to show you through it all very shortly, just while I finish off a couple little bits, hence the wait. So as for today's video, um, about a month or two ago, I went to Brent's Railway as usual for a running session with the lads and Ollie had his poly there. And stupidly, I made the mistake of asking if I could have a go at long last. I mean, I've been meaning to for quite a while. So I finally took the plunge and asked him and he showed me how to use it. And as you'll see here in this clip, I had a little go. So as you can clearly see by that video, I was having a lot of fun and uh, it really gave me a new perspective on that side of the hobby. I really like the thought that you've basically got to keep the thing alive. It keeps you on your toes. You're constantly doing something and it makes the day fly by. So with that said, I was straight on the internet looking for a loco. I narrowed it down to three, I think it was, which were basically locos that worked on Steam on the Met. Um, obviously keeping the London Underground theme. And then I ended up traveling all the way up to a place called Southport, just past Liverpool, and picked a 94XX pannier tank up. So I will show you through that now and hopefully you enjoy the video. So I've arrived at Brent's, we've got the pannier tank out and the other new addition, the auto coach. The pannier tank, we've got a little issue with the oil pump for the steam oil. Um, so this thread here was absolutely knackered. So we've had to cut that down and put a new seat in there. So that's all good. But after doing that, try putting the fitting back in it goes into where the cylinders are and the fitting that goes on this end stripped <laughs> typical i think the uh, guy that put it together before may have either over tightened it or where he's just had it apart so many times probably just damaged the threads over time so brent is now kindly helping me out by making a new piece so this basically sits in there as you'll see when it's done and then we've got a little pipe that goes between this fitting and this hole here and uh, that's now what's preventing us from running i'm just pumping some water in it now so i fill the tanks up with the watering can and we've got the hand pump here in the cab basically just using this to pump water into the boiler eventually you'll see the water level rise on this little side glass here but to sort of show you around obviously you've got the hand pump here which is a manual way of pumping water from the tanks into the boiler We've got the regulator here, which is a bit of an unusual type because it's got so much travel on it. Typical maxi track design, I think. So that's fully closed. You've got your pressure gauge here. The 90 PSI is the red line, but someone's uh, had a field day with the red pen. So I'm probably gonna replace this, to be honest, just for a slightly bigger one, easier to read. Um, we have got the steam raising blower here. So once you've got a bit of steam up using the manual blower, with the battery which goes on the chimney once you've got about 20 25 psi you can slowly open this and then the steam from the loco itself will pull the fire through um, basically so obviously you've got the fire door shut firebox door shut sorry and then you put the blower on and it draws the fire through the grate and through the tubes in the boiler and out through the chimney and that's basically what you're reenacting when you start off with this so it's just to get it going. But yeah, after you're about 25 PSI, you open that slightly and that'll do the job itself. So you can take the blower off the top. Here we've just got a blow down for the water gauge. So when there's steam in there, the water level will fluctuate up and down quite a lot. And you just basically just blow that off just to get the air out. And it gives you a bit more of a precise reading. On the left-hand side here is the axle pump. So when you're driving along, you can adjust this um, because it'll run off the motion and that will pump water from the tanks into the boiler and you adjust it to suit depending on where your gauge is and obviously the reverse are here so you've got forwards backwards obviously and neutral in the middle and that's about it really so as i say it's a 94xx pannier tank which is a very late design pannier just before the end of steam 
The reason I've gone for this is because my options were basically a 94XX Pannier, a 57XX Pannier, or a 45XX Prairie Tank. The Prairie Tank I would have done in uh, London Transport L150 livery, um, but I have seen someone else do one, and I've seen a lot of Prairies about, so I kind of wanted something a bit different. Pannier Tank obviously would have gone in London Transport, but again, I've seen quite a few of those actually. There's, there's a good three or four that I've spotted. Whereas the 94XX, I've only seen one or two. And the idea is another steam on the Met Loco. So it will go into BR Black and it will be renumbered as 9466. I'll get the um, L150 headboard, hopefully. I'm going to put some working lamps on here and here and uh, modernise it a bit. Because <laughs> uh, green isn't really my thing. It's really smart though. It's uh, really nicely built. Motion underneath looks great. The only uh, downside to this is it has inside valve gear, so everything is inside. Whereas I did kind of want outside cylinders, which is another thing that drew me to the Prairie, but you can't win them all. Being a GWR engine, it's only got one safety valve, and uh, that does work, thankfully. And um, the boiler is hydraulic tested until I think 2023, and it's got steam test until April 2022. So as soon as this fitting's done, we can uh, get rolling. I mean, obviously Brent's a tester anyway, so we would have been able to iron out any issues and probably get a ticket on it. But for now, it means that I can just fire it up and go. And here's the GWR auto coach I picked up from a kind chap called Matthew off of Facebook. I saw this advertised on the five inch gauge group and uh, I had to jump straight on it because something like this is gonna sell very fast because it was at a very reasonable price. Now, it's absolutely enormous. It's just over five foot long. And it's all steel construction, so it weighs an absolute ton. So I don't know what I'm going to do about storing this. How I would store this at home, I don't know, because I don't actually have a garage. It's either that or I asked Brent Conley if I could leave it here for when we come down, because we are here most of the time anyway. I've been told it's a Model Works auto coach. And it is built substantially enough that you can sit on it. And you will notice that out of the side is a brake handle. So it is a brake riding truck, which is nice. So that obviously activates the brake box there. Really nice uh, sort of linkage underneath to tie those in. And uh, it's gonna look really nice with the pannier. Now a few people that are sort of diehard steam lovers will probably be aware that 94XXs didn't work with water coaches, supposedly, as I've been told. But it's a model railway, who cares? Well, is it a model railway? Model engineering, we'll call it. So, it's not the end of the world. I mean, realistically, a 94XX probably, probably hasn't pulled a wagon that looks like this anyway, so <laughs> it's not the end of the world. But yeah, um, the only issue is, obviously, with the steamer, you'd sit at this end, obviously, so you've got a brake. But there's no cutout in the roof for me to put a coal box or anything like that in. So this would obviously work with a tender engine, but with having a pannier tank, uh, I would have to modify the roof so that I can have sort of a removable roof section with a little coal storage underneath and maybe a water tank inside as well for extra water. So that's something I have to visit later down the line because obviously at the minute I will probably have to sit on my wagon so I can put coal in the front of it and then just um, drag this along behind. But something to think about for a later date as well as liveries. I'm not sure what I want to do in the future whether I would paint it a different livery or keep it chocolate and cream GWR. The windows, it'd be nice to put clear glazing in and put some sort of interior in. But yeah, so let's uh, get back to the pannier once Brent's finished making me a new fitting very kindly and we'll try and steam it up. And surprise, surprise, it didn't go to plan. We steamed it up, it had no power. Took it a bit, found the piston rings in this condition. So obviously they needed replacing. So the pannier is currently on its back because we've got the pistons out of it because the previous owners fitted some piston rings that were, by the looks of it, completely wrong. So you can see in there, it's nice and empty. So we've got some new ones. Brent's just gonna machine the pistons for us and then we'll put them back in, slot them into the motion and uh, fingers crossed it will now actually pull its own weight. So Brent is just gonna kindly machine my pistons slightly because the new O-rings that we're gonna fit need a little bit more wiggle room so that they can roll over slightly when it's in motion. Obviously Brent's got his machine shop here. Very lucky to have him about. 
Um, so yeah, he's gonna make this slot slightly wider, put the brand new earrings in that I picked up, chuck it back in the loco, and fingers crossed, it'll work. And of course, Ollie's here too with a 14XX and an 01. So let's have a play.
So you can see the Pannier runs really well. Well, so does Ollie's uh, 14XX and the 01, to be fair. They all seem to perform faultlessly. Um, we have obviously had to do a little bit of work to it, and it's no surprise with something like this. So, namely, the piston rings, where well, the O-rings had to be replaced with Viton rings uh, that were the correct size, including a little bit of machining to the pistons themselves. Obviously, a little bit of work machining, new fittings for the oil pump, which Brent kindly did. And uh, something I didn't mention is the auto coach actually needed a lot of machining work to its wheels, which uh, I understand Brent uh, didn't have the best time with, but he managed to get it sorted being the top engineer that he is. And uh, I wouldn't be able to do all this without him. So if he is watching, thank you very much, Brent. I really do owe you a lot. Um, but yeah, as for the Panny, I'm really, really pleased with it. And it really has ticked all the boxes for me. All that I want to do now is maybe look at the timing to give it a little bit more power because you might notice in a couple of the videos where you can hear it, it sounds slightly off beat. It's not bad, but it just would help it be a bit more efficient and be able to pull a bit more. Uh, also, obviously it needs painting into BR Black with 9466 nameplates, uh, or number plates I should say, and then the BR Lake Crests. Then it will sort of represent what I want. But for now, for the summer season, I probably will leave it green because I don't want to be taking it apart when we've got all this nice weather in case we miss a decent weekend of running. So for now, I'll probably leave it green as it is and then it'll be sort of later on in the year that I'll paint it. But yeah, as for it, I'm really pleased and I couldn't rec recommend it more. So if you are looking at getting into this sort of hobby, it's well worth the money. There are groups you can join on Facebook, such as 5-inch gauge model railways, uh, you've got miniature railway model engineering things like that and there's some great advice on there so don't be afraid to ask questions if you want to get into the hobby so once again i have to just say thank you for watching the video i really hope you enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to the next video with the five inch gauge steam let me know in the comments below what you enjoyed and what you're looking forward to seeing obviously it goes without saying with youtube please like and subscribe and share the video if you can get those numbers up it really means a lot um, as for double O gauge, that will be coming soon. I know a lot of you are eager to see it sort of running and operating. Um, you, as you can see, me taking some time out of YouTube to kind of just concentrate on my own thing and not really be thinking in the back of my head, what can I video every week, has meant that a lot of progress has happened lately. So it will be worth it. And fingers crossed, if everything goes to plan, we might see it at some shows next year or maybe the year after who knows but it is the plan the layout is portable it comes apart so who knows look forward to the future um but as for everyone that's helped me i've got to say massive thank you to ollie at water road so go and follow his channel as always i mean i'm sure plenty of you probably do already um also brent we couldn't do it without you and i probably wouldn't have bought a steam engine if we didn't know you well i definitely wouldn't to be honest because his expertise in this field is second to none and I've just got to thank him for all the work he does and the machining and stuff and just letting us run his railway for him. Next video will probably be another 5 inch gauge one unless I get around to doing this layout update. But I am currently quite busy. Um, but we have been to another private railway which is owned by a chap called Bruce, a very nice guy. Uh, it's a lot smaller than Brent's but it's very scenic and it's really good fun for a day out. So I've got plenty of clips from there. So look forward to that in the next video. But for now... Go follow the Instagram, the Facebook pages. I am on TikTok, not that I'm really using it much, um, but it depends how popular it gets, really. Um, so go and find me on there, Underground Eric, and I will probably see you soon at the Hornby train show, if any of you are going in Milton Keynes. So for now, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.